I want to basically talk about is with a function, what you have is you know you have an input and you have an output. You have an x, which is generally associated with the input, and the y, which is generally associated with the output. The domain, which again is associated with the x, the range, which is associated with the y, and then you have the independent variable, that's what you put into the function, and you have the dependent variable, that's what you have coming out. So basically you can think of these as a group and these as a group. I just want you to understand that concept. So when we talk about inverse functions, what we're doing is we're actually reversing that process. So some examples of inverse functions are like if you multiply by two and then you divide by two, you know, you're, you're reversing that process. If you add three and then you subtract three, you know, you're reversing that process. If you square something and then you take the square root, those are all examples of inverse functions. But the simplest example that your teacher may give you in your class is, you know, what's the inverse, you know, of this, data set here. Well, you can see the three is mapping to one, right? Because the X is the input, Y is the output, four is mapping to negative two, etc. But if you wanted to find the inverse function, what you would do is you would interchange the inputs and the outputs, the X's and the Y's. So we could write the inverse as one, three, negative two, four, six, five, three, comma, seven. So that's the idea. You're just interchanging the input and output. That's the most simplest example. Now, a little bit more challenging example. Say, for example, they take us they give us this equation of a line, y equals 2x minus 1, and they say, you know, what's the inverse of this equation? Well, there's two different ways to approach this. One way is like an intuitive way, and I'll explain that. So when you put x in, what do you do? You, so you start with x, then what do you do? You multiply by 2, so I'll write times 2, and then what do you do? Then you subtract 1, so then you go to minus 1. All right, so I'm just kind of writing this out. But if you wanted to reverse this process, you would go, instead of from left to right, you would go from right to left. So instead of subtracting one, what would you do? You would add one, okay, and then instead of multiplying by two, you would divide by two like that. So what we could do if we wanted to write the inverse function, we could say, well, we'll start with x, we're going to add one, and then we're going to divide that quantity by two, and that's going to be our new equation. Now, we could write this a little bit differently by splitting this up into two fractions, y equals one-half x plus one-half. That's the intuitive way to do it, to think about reversing out those steps. But the algebraic way of doing it is to just interchange the x and the y, solve for the new y. So what we're going to do is we're going to wherever you see y, you're going to put x. Wherever you see x, you're going to put y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the new y. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, okay? So that gives us 2y equals x plus 1. Okay, and then we're going to divide everything by 2. And you can see that's what we were getting right here. So you can see this is coming out to y equals one half x plus one half. I'm just dividing this by two and this by two. Now let's talk about the graph a little bit. So say we graph this original equation here, y equals two x minus one. The y-intercept is negative one, the slope is two, so I'm going up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. It looks something like this, right? Okay. Now this one here, we have y equals one half x plus one half. So we have the y-intercept of one half. We're going up one over two, up one over two, uh, approximately like that. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, give us a pretty good, decent sketch here. So this is like something like this, okay? Now what you're gonna notice about these two graphs is that these graphs are the reflections over this dashed line. This dashed line is the line y equals x. Whenever you reflect something over the line y equals x, it's the same thing as interchanging the x and y coordinates like we did here in this first example. So that's another way to kind of identify inverse functions is that you'll see that they're the reflection, the mirror image, over this 45 degree line, the line y equals x. Okay, so now let's go ahead into a little bit more uh, challenging example. We've got f of x equals 1 third x plus 7. Notice this is in this is written in the function notation, the f of x notation. So when you see f of x, you can think of that like y, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the inverse function. So we're gonna do that by interchanging the x and the y. Wherever you see y, you're gonna put x. Wherever you see x, you're gonna put y. And we're gonna do some more challenging examples too after this one, but just to show you the process. So our goal is to solve for the new y. We're gonna subtract seven from both sides. So x minus seven equals one third y. We're gonna do the opposite of, uh, multiplying by one third, we're gonna divide by one third, which is really like multiplying both sides by three. And so now you can see the one third and the three cancel, and we're getting y equals three x minus 21. Now you see we started off with this f of x notation, 
what we're going to do, instead of writing this as y, we're going to write this as f inverse of x. So see that little minus 1 there, f minus 1? That just means that this function is the inverse of this function right here. So 3x minus 21. It's just a notation uh, to represent that the functions are inverses. So Okay, so a more challenging example, we're going to find the inverse of this one now. Now, what you notice here is that you know f of x, we're going to represent that as y. And this is equal to 2x plus 3 over x minus 4. Now remember we said that if we want to find the inverse, we interchange the x and the y. Well, here we have two x's. So what we're going to do is we're going to, wherever we see x, we're going to replace that with y. So we actually have two y's now and one x. No problem though, we still want to isolate that y, we want to solve for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of this as a fraction by putting it over 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply, cross the diagonal, okay, to get rid of the fraction. So this is just the cross product. So what we have here is x times y minus 4 equals 2y plus 3 times 1, which is of course itself, anything times 1. I'm going to distribute the x, so that gives us xy minus uh, 4x, right, equals 2y plus 3. And then what we're going to do is any term that has a y in it, we want to get on one side. Everything else we want to get on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides. So that's xy minus 2y. And then I'm going to add the 4x to the other side. So that's going to be 4x plus 3. Now you see these two y's here. What we want to do is we want to factor out the y. Okay, that's the, that's the trick. That's the key for these types of problems. Uh, is to factor out the y. Then what you can do, the opposite of multiplying by x minus 2 is to divide both sides by x minus 2. Okay, those are going to cancel. And now you can see this is going to be our inverse function right here. So y equals 4x plus 3 over the quantity x minus 2. So a little bit more challenging example. Okay, now the next thing we want to talk about is, is the inverse a function? So here's where we have to talk about the vertical line test. VLT and the horizontal line test, HLT, right? Vertical line tests, what we do is we take a vertical line, say for example like this marker, and we go across the graph like this, right? Basically what we're doing is we're drawing vertical lines, and we're seeing if it crosses the graph more than once. If it crosses the graph more than once, that means that this you know, equation, this graph is not a function. It means for every x value there would be more than one y value, okay? This one passes the vertical line test, that means that this graph is a function. But if we want to find out whether the inverse of this graph is a function, that's when we use the horizontal line test. And so what we're doing here is we're drawing horizontal lines like this, and we're seeing if it crosses the graph more than once. And in this case, you can see it's crossing at two points. So that means that it fails the horizontal line test. That means that the inverse of this graph is not a function, right? And basically what the horizontal line test is, it's a shortcut. See, the other way to do this is, remember how we talked about earlier in this video, that if we reflect a graph over the line y equals x, we get the inverse graph, right? And so if we reflect this parabola over this line, what you see we're getting is a graph that looks like this. It's actually like a parabola that's on its side, right? Now when you look at this graph here, you can see it's failing the vertical line test. For every x value, there's two y values, right? So for every, every input, you're getting uh, you know, two different outputs. That's not a function. But what this horizontal line test does is it saves us a lot of time, energy, effort, of having to you know, reflect that graph over the line y equals x and then do the vertical line test, we can just look at the original graph, and do the horizontal line test and see if the inverse would be a function. Okay, so that's an important concept. The next thing we want to talk about is how do we verify whether functions are inverses of each other and how do we prove it, right? So your teacher will oftentimes ask you these questions and what you want to do is you want to do the composition of functions. So what I mean by that is you want to find out what f of g of x is and what g of f of x is. If you get x for both of these when you compose the two functions, that proves that the functions are inverses of each other. And I'll try to explain why. It's like this. Like say for example you put x into your function, right? And that takes you over here, right? And then if you put that quantity here and you put it into the inverse function, you should get back x, right? Because Whatever operations you're doing, the inverse function, if it reverses it, it should take you back to that initial input, which was x. So that's, that's the logic and the thinking behind it. But let's go ahead and uh, do an example here. So f of g of x, this top one right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take g of x, which is 1 half x plus 1 half, right? And we're going to put that in right here. Now, the way functions work is whatever's in parentheses, we put in for x on the right side of the equation, okay? So this is 2. 
And this is going to be our new input, our new x value, our new quantity that we're substituting in. So now you can see if we distribute, we're getting 2 times 1 half which, x, which is x, 2 times 1 half, which is 1, and 1 minus 1, you can see those are canceling, and you're getting x, so that's great. Now, you don't want to stop there. A lot of students will say, oh, yeah, I proved it. I verified it. You also want to do it the other way, right? So you want to do g of f of x. So here what we're doing now is we're taking the f function, that's this quantity here, and we're putting it into our g function. Now, remember, the way functions work, you take whatever's in the parentheses here, that, that's the input. You want to put that in for x on the right side, right? So that's going to be 1 half plus 1 half. Now, we're putting this in, okay, for x like that. So if we distribute the 1 half, we're getting 1 half times 2x, which is x, 1 half times negative 1, which is negative 1 half, plus 1 half. Now, notice those negative 1 halves and one, positive 1 halves are canceling. We're getting x. So you can see that we proved both f of g of x and g of f of x gave us x. So we reversed out that process. We show that they're undoing one another. And that proves or verifies uh, that the two functions are inverses of each other. So that's an important concept to understand. The next thing we want to talk about is how to restrict the domain because sometimes, like what the graph we had here, this, we realized that it was not a function, so uh, the inverse was not a function. So we say, well, how do we look at just a portion of that graph so that the inverse is a function? Let's talk about that next. Okay, so we're looking here at the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 1. We recognize that this is a parabola. See, it's a quadratic x squared. The minus 1 is shifting it down 1. The 2 is stretching the graph, making it go up a little bit faster, make it a little bit narrower. But when we look at this graph, remember we talked about earlier how the horizontal line test tests to see if the inverse is a function. And you see how it's failing that horizontal line test. It's crossing at more than one point. So that means the inverse of this uh, you know, function is, this inverse of this graph is not a function, right? So what we need to do, or what we're asked to do here, is to restrict the domain so that the inverse is a function. Okay, meaning we want it to pass that horizontal line test. Okay, now what we can do here is, let's go ahead and look at one half of this graph. Now it doesn't have to be half, but let's just look at this portion right here. Okay, this part I'm making a little bit darker, okay? This part that's greater than or equal to zero. So x is greater than or equal to zero. And uh, you can see now it passes the horizontal line test, right? So that means that the inverse of this graph will be a function. So let's look at the domain for a minute. So the domain we said for this part is x is greater than or equal to zero. The range is y is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, but when you find the inverse Okay, what happens is, because you're switching the x and the y, the domain and the range are actually switching, okay? So with our inverse function, the domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so they just switch like that. But let's go ahead and uh, find the inverse here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with y equals 2x squared minus 1. We're going to interchange the x and the y like we did earlier, and we're going to solve for the new y. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Right? So that's x plus 1 equals 2y squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, right? And then, so now we have y squared equals x plus 1 over 2. I just flip the equation. I'm going to take the square root. But remember, when you take the square root, how many answers do you get? 2, right? Plus or minus. So this is going to be plus or minus the square root of x plus 1 over 2. Now, this is interesting. If you graph this on your graphing calculator or by hand, what you would get is you would get well, let me see if I can explain. Basically, what you would get is you would get this and you would get this. Okay, you'd have to actually graph it in two parts. You have to graph y equals plus the square root of x plus 1 over 2 and y equals negative the square root of x plus 1 over 2. The positive part is this part right here, this top part. Okay, and you can see that if you reflect just this part over here over the line y equals x, you're going to get a graph that looks approximately like that. Okay, and so if you were to reflect this part over the line y equals x, then you would get the other half of the parabola. That's this part here. Okay, so depending on how you're restricting the domain, if you're looking at, you know, this right half, you're going to be looking at this part of the graph, which is this one here, y equals positive square root of x plus 1 over 2. If you're looking at where x is less than or equal to 0, then we'd be looking at y equals negative square root of x plus 1 over 2. So this is an important concept to understand. Sometimes your teacher will ask you to restrict the domain. And again, you want to kind of pay attention to you know, what half you're looking at. So when you go to solve for the inverse, you take the proper one, whether it's the positive one or the negative one. So this was designed, uh, this video, to be a complete guide to just understanding 
you know, what inverses are all about, how to find the inverses, you know, how to verify their inverses, how to restrict the domain, etc. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up on the video to let me know or put a comment in the comments below if you have additional questions or things you want to ask about. Uh, a lot of times when uh, students are reading the comments, oftentimes they'll answer those questions before even I can get to them. So help one another out in that comment section below and uh, let me know what you thought of the video and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.